Mr. Miyamoto? Yes. And welcome. Today I intend to talk about the Pikmin. But lately, I've heard this strange sense that maybe Pikmin really are all around me. Do you see any around you? <laughs> Perhaps under your seat. <laughs> no. You probably won't find them, even if you look. <laughs> well, as usual, I'd like to ask Bill's help in allowing me to in speak in Japanese. <laughs> Bill? <laughs> Obey the captain. It has already been six years since we launched We, hasn't it? The following year, we started thinking about what we should do with our next hardware system, and we quickly arrived to one conclusion. In order for it to be a complete entertainment device, central to the living room, it could not be dependent upon the television. Because for more than 30 years, game machines that had to be connected to the TV, they could never take on a more important role than the television itself. When someone else is watching TV, you can't access the game system, and you can't see the game screen without waiting for the TV to power on. We decided that our next system was going to have its own dedicated screen, even if it had to be small. And that we wanted to make that the first screen people go to when they enter the living room. And that was the start of Wii U. This is Wii U. With the Wii U gamepad, we have the first dedicated personal screen in the long history of video games. This independent screen changes the importance of gaming machines, which have always relied on the TV screen. With this controller in your hands, you can, of course, quickly turn on a game. And it builds on our long experience of designing games that connect a portable gaming machine with a home console. And it makes unique new ways to play using two screens a possibility. There will be no need to wait to power on your TV to weigh yourself in Wii Fit. And because you can use the sub-screen simultaneously with while someone else is doing something on the TV, it will change how you watch television in the living room. Now, as we were developing this new system, Wii U, I thought, I definitely want to create the next Pikmin on this new hardware. So allow me to introduce the next Pikmin to you. This is the new Pikmin. It has already been 10 years since we created the first Pikmin for Nintendo GameCube. Now, Pikmin is a real-time action management game in which you command the Pikmin to perform a variety of tasks. And while the gameplay involves managing your swarm of 100 Pikmin, it is a game that shows the movement, movements of each Pikmin individually. They're very cute and adorable. This is why we puzzled over how far away to position the, pam the camera in the GameCube game. If it's too far away, you can't see the Pikmin, and if it's too close, you can't see the full map. The enhanced resolution of the Wii U has solved this puzzle for us. Now you can see the tiny movements of each Pikmin, and you can see that the, the natural setting is much more beautiful now as well. 
And the way they break the walls here, it's also more realistic. Now in Pikmin 3, the Pikmin will find materials that they can use to build bridges. But if you look, the way that they carry each little object makes them seem more like real ants. Now let me show you a new Pikmin type. These are the new rock Pikmin. You can use them to break hard objects. And with Motion Plus technology, you can aim at specific targets, offering deeper strategy. Now, the basic controls use the Wii Remote Plus and Nunchuck. You can aim precisely, you can switch between Pikmin, type, to Pikmin types, it's very smooth. So these simple and intuitive controls make it possible to target and throw Pikmin at enemy eyes or shells, and it adds more strategic depth when battling. And shaking the nunchuck to charge is a lot of fun. Now fans who have played the series before will, have, will quickly see how nice these new controls have become. Now, on the Wii U gamepad, you will always see an overall map. So in Pikmin, the most important gameplay element is how efficiently you are able to manage and assign tasks to your Pikmin within the limited time frame. This strategic element gets even de deeper as you are able to touch the map, scroll quickly over the environment, and more effectively place your Pikmin. So it's gotten, the, the strategy is much deeper now. Now, of course, you can also control the game using only the Wii U gamepad. And this style is much better suited to using the map more effectively. This also makes the game deeper on a tactical level because we've added additional leaders to help you break up your tasks. This time you can control up to four leaders. So that, help, that makes uh, controlling these deeper, uh, gives you further enhanced strategy on the map. And these are the four of them. You may notice that Captain Olimar is not among them. Uh, the reason for that is a secret. <laughs> So here, you see one leader throwing another to a separate spot where he can perform tasks. And with the Wii U gamepad, you can quickly check the status of all four leaders at one glance. So this is a must-have feature for switching between leaders and coordinating your strategies. So here at the show, you'll be able to try one of several modes in the game, the challenge mode. Now, this mode challenges you to collect as much fruit as you can within the time limit. And this is the mode that has some of the deepest strategic options. When you're done, you can watch a, a playthrough, a re, uh, you can watch a, record, a record of your playthrough on the TV screen and use that as a reference for a second time through. Now, we're developing Pikmin 3 with the belief that we can help people once again understand the kind of fun deeper games can offer. And in this era, when consumers are said to be moving toward lighter games, I think this is an important challenge for all of us. So, do you understand Pikmin 3 for Wii U a little bit better? <laughs> It's an all-new Pikmin game with a... It's an all-new Pikmin game with more detailed portrayal of the Pikmin thanks to the improved resolution of the hardware and greatly enhanced gameplay thanks to the unique new controls. And I certainly hope you will all try it out on the show floor. And maybe, as you play, you'll start to see Pikmin all around you, too. Thank you very much. I feel just like a purple Pikmin. Thank you, Mr. Miyamoto and Bill. And a hello and welcome to all of you here today at the Nokia Theater, and to many more who are watching online at e3.nintendo.com, and also on Spike TV and MTV2. We started off at the top today showing you a game, because that's what's most important about this presentation.
It's all about the games. In all, in one form or another, you'll see 23 Wii U titles on stage today. And that's a lot to squeeze into for just an hour. And even then, that's only a small part of the range of Wii U and Nintendo 3DS titles playable here in LA this week. And that doesn't leave much time to talk about Wii U itself, the new hardware console, and how the integrated second screen on the new controller manufactures new experiences. In other words, less time to consider what Wii U means to both gamers and non-gamers, and how it can change your life. And understanding this is vital. Here's why. At its core, Wii U does three different things. It changes your gaming. It changes how you interact with your gaming friends. And it changes the way you enjoy your TV. It's not just intuitive, not just accessible to everyone, but it stands to revolutionize your living room. Does that mean Netflix and Hulu? Yes. And YouTube? Yes. And Amazon Video? Of course. But it's how you enjoy that content and more that will make it truly unique. We know that's a strong assertion. But the proof points are going to have to wait for another day. There's no way we could explain it all this week. So here at E3, we'll focus only on the new form of gaming and the new ways to connect with your friends. And then, in the near future, we'll show you how Wii U will integrate and elevate your living room entertainment. Now, that still leaves a lot to cover in just a few days. And what happens on stage here is just a small part of what we're calling Nintendo All Access at E3, a name you'll want to remember. Because to fully appreciate Wii U, you're going to have to devote more time, and we really hope you do that, at e3.nintendo.com. That brings a lot more information, assets, and an insider's look at our E3 activities on our social media channels. So be sure to check out Nintendo, Wii U, and Nintendo 3DS Facebook fan pages, the Nintendo YouTube channel, and follow us on Twitter with the at Nintendo America Twitter handle. Now, as some of you are already aware, the news flow actually began Sunday night when we posted a Nintendo Direct hosted by Mr. Iwata. It demonstrates how Wii U can not only open up new forms of gaming, but also act as a unique social window, connecting you to your gaming friends with a game-based experience. The key that unlocks it all, of course, is the new controller, the Wii U gamepad. And this week, you'll begin to understand the new disruption called asymmetric gameplay. This means putting one player with the gamepad in a solitary role, competing differently, maybe even winning in a different way, pitting just you against everyone else. And I'm happy to announce, just like the original Nintendo Entertainment System, the Wii U hardware will support two separate gamepads. Now, this week we're focusing on single gamepad challenges, but look for dual gamepad experiences in the